I keep in my personal library the entire exhibition, 30 illustrations of Hamlet after Shakespeare, but also the 18 illustrations Cousin Shakespeare by Marin Sorescu, two books by Alina Danielescu entitled Blues with Nikita Stănescu, and Pantarei, which have wonderful manuscript illustrations, then 12 paintings for Lord of the Flies by William Golding and in a premonitory way, not only for the Livia Balus activity as a plastic artist, La Suisse en Ponce, the fairy tale country from Livia's dreams, presented in 12 images on Bertrand Clavel's writings. I still keep a prototype of a tiny 5 to 5 centimeters volume of lyrics, also Alinas and graphics, also, also Livia's, entitled drops of dew, destinated to join a cassette of classic music selections. I also keep a book of sidereal stories by Stefan Gander, illustrated and colorized by Livia for me, who happened to be the book editor at that time. Last but not least, I also have the original The Nervous Disease poems, lived and written by Alina Danielescu and weekly illustrated also by Livia. So, determination and perfectionism. Meanwhile, Livia was finishing her plastic art studies in a technique which she wanted to master, the engraving technique, together with the erudite combination of line and colored areas. Then came the news about an unexpected success at an outside painting contest organized by Carandash in Geneva. And unique holiday cards realized in some of the most spectacular techniques. Some of them were school exercises, some were true jewelry or, to be more specific, small artistic objects. She was still Livia. Livia so meticulous, mastering a certain domain or equally a story before bringing it to life and shape through the graphic expression. From the extraordinary delicate graphic works and the always surprisingly sense and science of detail, to the watercolor or color chalk and collage, to photography, cardboard, crayon, chalk, silk, all poured in abstract and figurative shapes. I dare say I used to feel an equal distance to crossing the desert in absolute harmony and equally in permanent struggle and self-recover. From all this to general topic of shamanism, there is equally a long and short way. Because Livia Balo has learned to better listen to her own inner self, she, the one who had searched understood and expressed so well Golding, Sorescu and Shakespeare. Because she felt in what way the journey to hidden worlds, known especially through the myths and dreams, the healing of the soul through interaction and cooperation of shaman with the spirits, in absolute respect with love, with everything that surrounds us, can be plastically surprised and expressed. I would call it in some sort of catharsis, if I happen to let myself feel entirely what Livia Balu tells us now.